Wim, I've been struggling with God my entire life, looking for, do I believe in God? What is that God like? And, and, and uh, because the proofs or demonstrations are, are generally enjoyable, but, but not definitive by any means, I like to look at, what is this God we're talking about? And so I'm listening to a lot of alternative concepts of God. Your view, as I understand it, takes the traditional Judeo-Christian God, but but molds it or or constricts it into a more naturalistic world. Uh, h- how does that work, and, and does that give us more confidence that such a God may in fact exist? Yeah, my view begins, I think, with accepting the scientific story. So there is a lot of understanding about reality. There are elements we don't understand, but we will fill them in over time. Uh, not in our lifetime necessarily, but humans. Uh, so there, we have come to understand reality far deeper than we did centuries ago as humans. And part of it is that it shows an enormous integrity of reality, and a part also in space and time. So an image of God up there in a very spatial sense, we can't, can't we don't have a, a place for that. So we are facing a question about how to think about ultimate reality. And part of how I have come to see that is thinking about if you appreciate the scientific understanding, still you have uh, questions remaining, kind of limit questions about the scientific understanding. Mm-hmm. Those may be the ultimate origin of everything or the ultimate origin of the laws of nature, of the fact that the world is so well organized. And I think part of that kind of ultimate qu- limit questions raises at least an open-endedness to the scientific understanding where you might either say, well, uh, that's there's a mystery behind it all. Maybe mystery is a better word. I'm leaning more to an agnostic side than to saying, well, it, it's it's not evidence for a particular answer, sure. but it is an opening where you might have a more theistic answer. I do have high respect for some colleagues who are uh, very <laughs> theistic and then appreciate science. Uh, and you might be more agnostic, uh, talking about the mystery of existence in those terms, or... Uh, also more imminent, as if the ground of existence is within reality, uh, but still that then you have this question where the ground of order uh, has its its roots. In the latter category, that's moving more towards some of the pantheistic uh, images where God is the world and the world is God, or panentheistic images where where uh, where God and the world are the same. Uh, the world is in God, but God is bigger than the world. Do those images fit? more closely with your understanding of a of a naturalistic kind of God? Well, part of it for me is the challenge about, think about pantheism, about the world as God, are issues not so much of explanation but of value, that you somehow seem to endorse everything as good. And there is some ambivalence as well. Uh, there's a, a lot of wonder about reality, appreciation of it, but in the pantheistic view, it seems all... Uh, deified. It's 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 all put so high on. on uh, well, in pantheism, yeah, indeed, uh, so all reality is deified. Uh, does that d- does that conform more with the scientific understanding? Uh, well, there, there are two concerns for me in deifying reality. One is, uh, what does it add? It, it seems pretty superfluous <laughs> in just giving it another label, but <laughs> saying, well, all of reality. And the other right. is also. Uh, well, in our reality as humans, we see things uh, evil or human sin, human failures. Mm. And uh, so we also need the God language, I think, to express uh, and, and differentiate morally between the, the positive and, and that which we want to criticize in the light of some higher ideal. Mm. I like starting with your core concept that you're going to look at the religious view of the world in a naturalistic context. You ground yourself in naturalism and science and then look for some of these areas that, uh, that uh, science can't answer as, Mm -hmm. as the, as the openness for where religion might flourish. So if, when you do that, what kind of God does that lead you to? to see? I mean, how does it change your your view of what that God may be like? Not whether it exists or not, put that mm-hmm. aside, but if it exists, h- how do you get a, a, a sense of the, of the nature of that God? 
I think it has, for me, improved the understanding of the, the greatness of it all. So there is a, 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 a theologian in the Middle Ages, Anselm, who talks mm. about God as being greater than which nothing can be understood, as the, the, the clearly different from any creaturely like thing. This t- concept of the origin of it all, not in a particular time, but it's much more than just an engineer making it. It's, it's really, uh, the possibility of thinking of, of wonder about why is there something rather than nothing? Where does it all come from? Is a very deep question, I think. So you're saying the more that you have embedded yourself within a naturalistic view, which to some people would make you more atheistic and away from theism, you're saying that that view is giving you a deeper and richer understanding of what God may be like. Yes, not as a claim that I now understand it, yeah, God, sure. but as a, a a way of thinking about the greatness of it all. Another line for me is the kind of which is also this sense of abstraction is with mathematics and also with morality that in uh, in human thinking or human experiences we do we do count we do measure triangles or or more complex objects and we apply mathematics but if you look more closely uh, we don't have any mathematical objects in our world uh, we don't have any triangles we can <laughs> make drawings of triangles, but they're never perfect. They're mm-hmm. never sure. the mathematical thing. Sure. We don't have numbers. We ha- may have two or three things, <laughs> uh, but we don't have the number three in itself. Right. And so this world of mathematics also has this kind of transcendent quality, uh, which goes back way to the Greeks, to Plato, thinking of eternal objects. Sure. Uh, and I'm not totally going with Plato, I think, but there's something fascinating about this This perfection of of mathematics and still its applicability in our world and morality has something not as strong but i think there's also kind of universalizing tendency beyond any particular human practice that seeks to find uh well more universal values and those are notion of transcendence not just in origins but also in uh order and in goodness that i find fascinating but i don't know how to deal with it so take those abstract objects, be they mathematics or morality, and deeply appreciate it, which I do. How then can you move from that to the nature of, of a transcended being that might be behind it? C- can you make that leap? I find it very difficult to jump from this mathematical world of abstraction or moral values to a being because a being suggests more something you can point out at somewhere in reality. Right. Whereas this is precisely trying to step away from <laughs> the world of objects and in this intellectual exercise of reflecting upon it, uh, having a kind of hint of, of a world of, well, on the one hand, abstractions, so that in a sense they are not real, but still they are very significant. And there is, mm. uh, uh, so, uh, that's the, the mixture of existing and non-existing that this mathematical or platonic kind of possibilities uh, allows. So when you deeply appreciate that does, that, does that help differentiate the kinds of gods on offer in the world, be they from the Eastern religions that have very different characteristics of the, of the ultimate, or to theistic religions or pantheistic senses of the divine? When you have that deep mm-hmm. scientific appreciation um, and the the sense of these abstract objects, does it help you select among these different alternative concepts of God? What's more logical, not yeah. logical? I, I wonder whether it helps to, to differentiate between the religions. I think it's far more that intellectual reflection helps within religions. So within a particular way of thinking, uh, say the theistic image, it moves away from the old man with the beard right. to a more abstract, uh, and for some, of course, then more more far away, but but maybe also more significant image. Uh, and I assume that that might work similarly in other monotheistic traditions. But for for Hindu world, well, there has been an, a, a process of abstraction there b- behind all the the deities worshipped uh, to a more a universal power behind it, mm-hmm. but their language is different, and so they might 
articulate that differently. And I think they could as well pick up uh, a sensibility for the wonder of existence, both in terms of explanation and and also of its order, its its mathematical structure. Uh, it, it, it sounds like because of your scientific sense, the, as you look at different religions and see the possibility of a transcendent, that it makes you more uh, accommodating to various kinds of religious points of view and less particular in focusing on the correctness of any one. Yes, I think that's true. Well, maybe it already was part of my upbringing, this <laughs> multi, this openness to cultural diversity and a liberal attitude in religion. But I think the the particular human forms of religion are very diverse. It's like languages. There are many different languages. And still, uh means people tell the stories differently and, and have different heritage, all the cultural variety. Uh, and that's that's all important and all rich to those who are raised in that and are comfortable in that language. Uh, and well, that's part of maybe also science. Uh, across those cultural differences, the scientists have learned to understand each other uh, and work together. Uh, and maybe in terms of religion, it's also appreciating the cultural diversity and allowing the, the diversity to, to continue to exist, uh, have all those different uh forms of, of expression and worship and meditation and all those practices. Uh, but, uh, as, well, assume I, I have the sense that not necessarily that they're all aiming at the same as if differences are not important, but that they are, that within all of those, it's possible to appreciate science and to appreciate the same issues.